Remember Your True Nature, Live Like a Saint, Part 3 of 5, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English and Chinese on September 1st, 2019, in New Land Ashram, Taiwan, also known as Formosa. So the princess, who is still young and beautiful at that time, was going to be born with the king, accompanied with all the concubines and second queen and all that, all queen and concubine. In some culture, they believe that these people will accompany the king in the afterlife to keep him company and to serve him, take care of him. And there's another theory, I think, because in India, a long time ago, People did that too. If the husband died or the king died, an you know, important person died, then uh, the wives, uh, the concubines, the uh, queen had to be burned together. Because the scriptures say that uh, when the king died, then the wife stand in front of the pyre, I mean the, the fire that they make to burn the body of the king, for example. They say, in front of the pyre, pyre, the fire. But then they don't know, somebody maybe deliberately or mistakenly took out the word in front. They say, in the fire. Of course, your wife is standing in front of your husband. Uh, cremation, no? Of course, right? It's the, the closest family kin. And then they say, in the fire, instead of in front of the fire. So many women has been burned this way. Imagine, imagine how cruel that can be. So I guess maybe because of the Hinduism or whatism at that time influence from India, the tradition in Champa royalty at that time also following that. So our princess was in danger. So of course our king, the Vietnamese king at that time, sent the general, the one who protected her all this time, and sent also accompany her to, to the next uh, country for the marriage. So he sent him and many others, some of the trusted guards, sent to their neighbor country, trying with all their might to save the princess' life. So he did. Somehow they did. But after that, um, the general and the princess are no more seen anywhere in the public eye. They just run away with each other from the politics, from royalty, from this kind of trade, human sentiment and love, just for land or for peace even. They just run away. They didn't ever come back. We understand. I would also. And the general at this time would never, ever want to risk one more time to let the princess go back to the royal palace. He did one time and he's pain so much already. So this time he has a chance. He won't ever let her go back to the palace again. And you would understand that. And she probably would never want to go back. If a father can give away a daughter like that. Uh, I don't think the daughter would trust the father again, ever. Even if it's for peace, sacrifice her. But she would be scared the whole life already. The scar in the heart would never heal completely. I told you that formerly, or maybe even now, people use this physical sex to exchange for many other things and even to, maybe willingly, just to promote themselves higher, to higher position, to more favorable situation as well. It probably happens in many places, not everywhere. We've seen some time in the movies, but uh, in real life probably also happens. As I said, to be able to create a human like this, 
Yeah? Can you imagine how powerful that is? So how can we, as a normal physical person, withstand this strong creative power and enlightening power that come with that as well? Our world has never been completely liberated and because of this power also. And our world has populated sometimes beyond necessity and beyond our economical standards, yeah? because of this power also. And rarely can anyone uh, withstand it. Okay? I, I read again because it's too much. So powerful that it could even create a life, you know? Even animals also create another life because of this power. But animals, most animals, they are more they are more clever than us. They have physical contact only during season. And then they don't have anything to do with each other again. Except us humans, we continue far beyond season. I don't know if we ever know what the season is for that. But the animals, they only have it in their seasons. Okay, and then they take care of each other and take care of their offspring. And we do it all the time. It creates a life or even some lives at the same time. Some people have quadruplet or quintuplet even. Or twin, yeah, you know all that. Okay, so it's so powerful. So powerful that if the humans succumb to this, we will not feel surprised. It's just for an enlightening method, it's even <laughs> more troublesome. Because it's so difficult to handle, to tame, or to use it for enlightenment practice. So it is rarely used by true practitioners, as the negative side effect is too great a risk to take. The Buddha is well aware of this fact that he even advised his monks not to look at women, even if a woman is already 70 years old and lying sick on the bed. Right? Ah, good. But I told you last time also, some time ago, Okay. Maybe you, the lay Buddhists, have not read this part, but all the monks and the nuns know it. That's why I asked them. Okay? I read this when I was uh, 20 something. Okay? So I might have forgot. <laughs> okay? Imagine. 40 something, 50 years already. And not bad, eh? <laughs> Still remember. I just asked them so to confirm with you, to verify it, so that you know that I did not tell you something wrong. Okay? Very difficult to withstand this power. The Buddha knew. So the monks and the nuns only look one meter ahead, they don't look anywhere. So I can see only insects to avoid, you know? to avoid killing insects, etc., etc. Okay, the other I talk already, so... The Buddha knew that almost for certain that all men will fail this method. This we don't need to, to be a Buddha to know, <laughs> right? <laughs> the Buddha knew. <laughs> I, I think all men knew. <laughs> you don't have to wait until you become a Buddha to realize this trouble, that almost all men will fail this method. Such a powerful force lay within our fragile and vulnerable physical. It's just too much to handle. Especially since we have been stripped of our knowledge of our divine self nature. Yeah? We did not even know about our self nature. And we are endowed with this kind of much powerful creative force. So this is very difficult for people. Some people call that hormone, but it is a force of this supposed to be for enlightening power within us that makes it that way. So in the scientific way, we call that a hormone. 
we are stripped of all knowledge of our divine origin and our divine wisdom. We know nothing. We are born deaf, dumb, spiritually, yeah, and blind, spiritually. Yeah, we have eyes where we don't see, have ears where we don't hear. So in the Bible also say the same. Seeing you see, but you do not perceive. Hearing you hear, but you do not understand. That's what it means. We are deaf, blind, spiritually. We see only out the thing. We see nothing of our real self and the real world within. So we stripped off all of that. So left alone to face all obstacles and troubles that heaped on us by the negative power of Maya. The powerful force inside we cannot handle, and the outside we are heaped on with all kinds of obstacles, temptation, trouble. <laughs> that is already too much to handle. So truly, if we don't go hide within our protective cell, then we really do life after life, come back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, do the same thing or similar things, never can be liberated. If there is no Buddha in the world, no saints, no enlightened person to help us with their blessing, with their compassion, we are doomed forever. If we can be reborn again as human or even as animal, it's already too good. Just worry we might be pushed too hard, that we do wrong thing, that we'll be condemned to hell, maybe forever. Remember Surangama Sutra. Even the practitioner sincerely want to practice, but then once he got something, some power, some knowledge, he begin to want something else, because not being guided by a true enlightened master such as Buddha or Jesus or Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when these masters were alive, okay, they can help us, but they mostly push us to go find living master. They help in any way they can, except initiation. That has to be done through the portal of physical uh, opening, okay, which an, a living master in a physical form can perform, together with the blessing that flow toward the true seeker by the master, share the blessing share the knowledge, share the grace, otherwise we are doomed forever. And after we already enlightened by a master, then all the master can help us inside. They all can help if we pray. The master that transfer the uh, enlightening wisdom can also help inside. But many other masters, they are always around, also helping us. Just lean on them, just pray to them, don't forget them. Always pray for help, okay? Any help we get, because in this world, if we don't have this kind of help, we drown any time, because we live in physical world, in enemy country. This is our enemy land, it's not our real land. Our real land is in Nirvana, is in heaven. So, to be here, we need help from all kind of invisible beings who are more powerful than us in our stage of young enlightenment, yeah, young self-knowledge. Yeah. We are just learning to walk. We cannot run, we cannot fly yet, so we rely on the inner master power, the physical inner master power, and the past and future masters all the time. If lacking real protection, most beings succumb to this powerful force from within, the creative power, which is supposed to be used for a more noble purpose, for enlightenment and liberation. We cannot use it. Actually, very difficult because we don't have protection. If we already lack protection, and we practice 
No, not even thinking of practice. Most people in the world, they don't even know this method, you know, like the, the power that can be used for enlightenment. They don't know anyway. And they don't have protection, mostly not. Not strong enough for this, yeah? So I say, what a pity indeed. Tai Kashi, rarely used, rarely can succeed. But God is good. <laughs> Because it gives us so many methods to choose, huh? Many methods to choose. But the Kuan Yin method is the best. All the Buddhas say that. Kuan Yin Bodhisattvas say that. Manchu Sri Bodhisattvas say that. Huh? Jesus taught that. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught that. So when you see the Muslim praying, they do pray almost like when you do Kuan Yin. <laughs>